So LOX-101 is really uh, the first selective inhibitor of, uh, of TREK. Um, and uh, it, uh, we started the trial almost two years ago. And uh, really, uh, uh, it was designed as a traditional phase one trial. Uh, but uh, we began enrolling patients uh, with known TREK fusions um, and have seen some remarkable responses in these patients. So NTREC is a really interesting gene. It's, uh, it was initially uh, defined as a gene that uh, is involved in uh, the central nervous system and involved in signaling and function of uh, both the central and peripheral nervous system uh, pathways, such as um, uh, proprioception, pain sensation, etc. But in the 1980s, they began defining that there were certain cancers that actually had abnormal uh, fusion pairings or fusion proteins of the NTREC gene with other partners. And what they discovered was is that these uh, fusion partners led to kind of this oncogenic addicted event in these cancer cells. And so um, and when we started the study, we, we knew that uh, there was a, a small prevalence of these fusion uh, patients or tumor patients in, in the population, but we weren't sure how many because the, the data, the literature data is not that robust. Um, but as we began enrolling these patients, we began seeing these responses in patients. And so far to date, we have now enrolled a total of seven patients with NTREC fusions of all different histologies. Um, and six of those patients that have been restaged so far have had some level of significant response. So, yeah, so entrectinib targets both ALK, ROS, and uh, TREK. And um, LOXA 101, however, is a much more specific drug than entrectinib in the sense that it only really targets uh, TREK A, B, and C. And the, the drug itself was designed so that, um, that it would really not have any other uh, 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 off-target uh, effects. And, you know, that's important in the context of, I think, what's called the therapeutic window. The more specific you are, the less off-target side effects that you may have, and the more uh, drug that you can deliver, and the more specific drug that you can deliver. There have been, um, we think, um, uh, the trial itself really kind of looked at all side effects, whether they were related to the actual drug versus uh, related to the underlying cancer. Um, but um, TREK inhibitors have known to cause things like dizziness, and we did see dizziness, as, as did entrectinib. Uh, but beyond that, you know, the drug has really been fairly well tolerated. And, and we've had patients on now for over a year without any major significant side effects. There is an ongoing basket study, a LOXO phase two trial that I'm also uh, a partner and a PI on with a number of other centers. And the idea is really to try to hone down uh, the signal in patients with TREK fusions. Uh, we know that they're out there, we know that uh, they can be rare or they can be very common in certain rare, rare tumor types. And so the idea is to, to, to figure out if uh, in these patients with multiple different tumor types with TREK fusions, how active this drug is. We've learned a couple of things about uh, the patients that we think may likely harbor these TREK fusions. One, Again, it's present likely in multiple different histologies, not just one specific tumor, like lung cancer. Uh, two, it seems to tend towards younger patients. Uh, most of our, a lot of our patients that we enrolled in the study that were found to have TREK fusions were under 50. Three, um, it, 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 we think that the prevalence of this tumor is is more common in certain subsets of uh, histologies. For example, mass tumors, memory analog secretory carcinomas, which oftentimes have been misclassified as either acinic cell tumors or parotid cancers. They likely have almost an 80% chance that they will have these NTREC fusions. Two, uh, we've seen papillary thyroid cancer patients in um, younger patients. 
And there's literature out there now suggesting that in over a quarter of these patients with young patients with aggressive papillary thyroid cancer patients, they may actually harbor the antrac fusions. We've seen now in certain types of sarcomas, like GIST, tumors that have that are negative for CKIT and PDGFR may also harbor these intract fusions. And we really think that these fusions are likely oncogenic drivers. That means uh, they are present in patients with like lung cancer and other sarcomas that do not have other mutations that are driving the tumor, such as BRAF, EGFR, or ALKROS. So I, my hope is, is that um, we will uh, have a, a fair number of patients in the basket study to really uh, update everyone at ASCR next year. Um, you know, it's 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 early to say uh, if the the these high response rates will pan out over large volume, large number of patients. But you know, it's it's really encouraging at least right now so far, both the entrectinib and this LOXA 101, almost everybody who's had a trect fusion have responded, right? So that's very encouraging. Um, uh, so our, my hope is that by next year, we will, uh, whether it's me or somebody else, to present uh, some preliminary data on the basket study and how that's going. But um, uh, we're also excited to note that we the, the next generation of trek inhibitors have already been developed. Aloxa 195, we know that there are uh, mutations that can arise that specifically confer resistance to the existing TREK inhibitors, including Aloxa 101. Um, but uh, we've already, Aloxa and Array Biopharm have already developed drugs that we think can overcome that mechanism of resistance, and we're already planning another study uh, for those resistant patients in 2017.